Good evening. Welcome to Kingdom Advancement. I am Apostle Sonia Chambers, and this evening we will be talking about cost. So we're going to give you a little chance to come on in. Come on in worshiping the Lord. Let's come on in praising. Earlier today, you know, I gave a personal invitation to everyone that's on social media to come out and listen to cost. It was... Um, a very sobering morning this morning because I was trying to sort out some things and the Holy Spirit was just talking to me. So let us just start to worship him. Let us start praising him. Let's give him honor, give him glory, give him praise. This is the day that he has made. We're going to rejoice. We're going to be glad in it. There's none like our God. Hallelujah to the King. Worthy, mighty, glorious is he. There is none like him in all the earth. We honor you, O God, tonight. We give you glory. We give you praise. There is none like you, O God, in all that. We worship you tonight, O Father. We are not going to count the cost because none of the cost is a loss when we follow in your instructions. So, Father, tonight we give you honor. Father, tonight we give you glory. Father, tonight we give you praise. Father, tonight we magnify your name. Holy is your name. King is your name. Master is your name. Counselor, keeper, friend. You will be with us till the end. So we worship you tonight, oh God, in Jesus' name. And all of us say amen because he deserves all the honor. He deserves all the glory. He deserves all the praise. He deserves to be magnified. He deserves to be glorified. He deserves to be lifted up right where you are in your home, in your car, in your office, wherever you are. Just worship him. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him praise. I'm excited tonight because I will not count the cost. Even in the loss, we cannot count the cost. Amen? So... Good evening, everyone. I'm Apostle Sonia Chambers. I'm the Apostolic Leader of Kingdom Advancement Alliance. I'm streaming live from our um, Florida because Kingdom Advancement Alliance is in Florida. I am at the Standard Bear Florida office, which is uh, will be officially transitioning on November the 28th. And it will be transitioning to another location in Florida. And we will be actually, I'm in our refuge retreat um space that we will now be closing down effective november 30th so i'm talking tonight i want to talk to us about cost and the word cost means require payment of right before it can be a, uh, acquired it there's a payment that's required amen another word for cost is the value i'm what's another word the price so tonight we want to talk about cost. And, you know, we talk about a lot of costs right now because things are uh, elevated in price. We, we're in the season now, we're talking about what the rent costs. Uh, we're talking about what cars cost. We're talking about what food costs, what gas costs, what clothing costs. But um, what apartments cost, what houses are cost? Because even the housing market, things are so escalated. But tonight we want to talk about real costs, right? So let's go to Luke chapter 14. That's the scripture tonight. And we're going to start in verse 25. I'm going to be reading from the Amplified. And let's just settle in to kind of see what the cost really you know, what price are we really willing to pay to do what the Lord is saying to do? It says in verse 25, it says, now large crowds were going along with Jesus. And he turned and said to them in verse 26, he says, if anyone comes to me and does not hate, not he, the word doesn't say doesn't like, it says, and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children, and brothers, and sisters, yes, and even his own life, in the sense of indifference to, to or relative disregard for them in comparison with this, hallelujah, in comparison with his attitude toward God, he cannot be my disciple. That's a, that's a price, right? That's a cost, because it's saying you not only and it's not like you hate them, like I don't like you, but it's like they can't come before God. 
We're talking about your mother. We're talking about your father. We're talking about your wife. We're talking about your children. We're talking about relatives. We're talking about jobs. We're talking about bank accounts. We're talking about booze. We're talking about bays. We're talking about all of it tonight. It says, if that is before God, hey, God, if that comes before him, then you can't be one of his disciples. Verse 27 says, whoever does not carry his own cross, expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come and follow after me, believing in me, conforming to my example, and oh, hallelujah. It says, conforming to my example in living, and if need be, suffering. Hey, God, suffering or perhaps dying because of the faith in me cannot be my disciple. First 28 says, for which one of you, when he wants to build a watchtower for his guards, does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if, hallelujah, to see if he has enough to finish it. And tonight I want to talk about this cost. Because the reality of the situation, uh, um, my late husband, um, Bishop Paul, uh, we had a construction company. And when we had the construction company, of course, there had to be estimates that had to be done. And then when we did the estimates, then we would put out the price. And then, of course, the, the, the customer may come back and say, you know, I would, you know, I'll take this out or can we negotiate this price based on what we would put out in the estimate? And I'm saying to you tonight, Jesus paid the price. He paid the ultimate price, his life for each and every one of us. And I'm saying tonight, he's, our, our, is, our discipleship is being tested in the scripture because it's saying, what is it that we have before him? Are we willing to count the cost? And, you know, I, I was thinking about uh, the Holy Spirit has really been dealing with me down here while in Florida related to our organizations, our structures, what things we need to uh, keep. Because one of the things you gotta realize is as a leader, as a, a mother, as a woman, as a male, as a father, as a business owner, as a ministry leader, you need to evaluate and look at costs. You need to evaluate and look at if things are effective. You need to look and evaluate if it's um, making a difference. And uh, I had to make some decisions related to uh, our nonprofit, uh, Pillar Training and Skill Services. In it's it has divisions in New York and, and Georgia. But one of the hardest things is that maybe a couple, maybe two weeks ago, the Lord told me I, you know, I had to close it. And I was like, I don't want to close it because guess what? My late husband opened it. It wasn't a nonprofit that I was even a part of initially. It was something that he opened in 2015 that he wanted for the youth, that, you know, he wanted to do uh, music lessons, scholarships. He wanted to, to do academic scholarships. He wanted to do things with um, building trades. He wanted to do a few things um, to help people and help youth especially um, move forward in, in life skills and, and trainings and so forth. But the reality is here we are seven years later and I was not seeing true fruit on the organization because it took a lot of work. And because I had other organizations that we are other nonprofits that we are working as well, plus the church, which the church is first. Um, it was very difficult for me. And I had to look and the Lord said, can you count the cost? Can you just look at it and see? And what I realized is that we weren't getting the donor support that was necessary to keep it, I mean, we could have gave out scholarship, but it wasn't, it wasn't going to be viable for the long term. And I had to make that painful decision to count the cost and look at it and say, you know, we don't need uh, this nonprofit anymore. And then we went into, we started a process of dissolving the organization. So we're still in that process, but I'm shutting down websites. We're, we're taking down Char 40s, which is a... a a search engine in New York City that we had that approval, uh, taking down the 501c3 staff, we're taking it all the, but what am I saying? You have to now have to look at things and start counting the costs. 
Are we just doing something to hold on to a name? Are we just doing something to hold on to fame? Or are we just holding on to something and we're looking for others to blame? But tonight we're saying we're going to have to count the cost and we have to cut our losses tonight in Jesus' name. And it's, it, for me, it might have been a nonprofit, but for you, it's going to be in a relationship. For you, it's going to be in a friendship. For you, it's gonna. it might be a marriage that needs to be addressed. It may be many things that you have to address, but you're going to have to count the cost and figure out that there's something that you may have to take the L, as the young people say, you're gonna have to take the loss. So it wasn't comfortable to, to say, I want to close the organization, but it had to be done. I'm in here in Standing Bear, Florida, Refuge Retreat. This, this space is near and dear to my heart. So many people, we have refuge here, we have respite here, we have loved on here, uh, we have hosted here. Our office space was here. I, I, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, in the midst of it, I moved in here in August 2020. So now we're in our second year of here, and the Lord says it's time to close it. So now our Standard Bear Florida team has transitioned out of New York City into Florida, and they will be taking over the helm. And I'm like, oh, this is a this was a cost because guess what? The reality of the situation in the scripture it says. If you're going to build, are you going to calculate the cost? And guess what? To bring in a team to sit in this state, it, there was a cost. We had to get apartments. We had to uh, incorporate down here. We had to get office equipment. We had to set up the refuge. We had uh, There were costs that were set up. And one of the things we have to uh, accept is that we have to be our primary investor. The, the one thing that people, you know, sit back and look at is like, oh, that's so wonderful, that's so great, but are you willing to invest in your own? Ouch, right? Because it's, it's great to be looking for investors, but the, the greatest investment is to invest in the kingdom of God because this is talking about kingdom advancement. And if we want to advance others, sometimes we are going to have to invest in others for them to advance. But unfortunately, what I learned is that sometimes even though that you invest in others, they may not reciprocate. But that's what they did to Jesus, right? He died for us and a lot of us still don't want to be sold out completely to him. We want to just sit back and straddle the fence, but this is no longer time to straddle the fence. This is time to count the cost. This is the time to step up and work for the Lord. It's time to advance the kingdom. So the scripture goes on to say in verse 28, it said, for which one of you, when he wants to build a watchtower for his guards, does not sit down and calculate the cost to see if he has enough to finish? And verse 29 says, otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is able to finish the building, all who see it will begin to ridicule him. Verse 30 says, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. And some things you're going to have to finish. Some things you're going to have to let go. Just as uh, the Lord spoke to me and said, you're going to have to let go of pillar. You're going to have to let go of refuge. But guess what? When I count the cost, I learned so many lessons in this space in a period of two years that we were able to transition the same model in a, in a different space into New York City where we can do more respite, where we can reach others more, where we can host more, where we could do more. But sometimes you're going to have to invest the same way that you... I went to Howard University. So the same way that I invested to... to uh, to take out loans, to get Pell Grants and all of these things, to go to the university, to fit. And I went in as undecided as a major. I didn't even know what I wanted to major in. And some of you are undecided. You don't know what your purpose is. You don't know what your calling is. You don't know what God wants you to do with your business. There's all of these things. But I'm saying it's time to sit down and count the cost. And this, you're going to have to do a list of is it working? Is it not working? And you're going to have to cut the loss in Jesus name. This is not about a balance sheet because I'm not talking money. I'm talking about is what you're doing viable because sometimes it can still be bringing in money, but is it viable in where you're supposed to be going in this season? And I had to realign my mind and have to uh, really settle my heart that even though 
I like a thing and actually love a thing, is it really good for me? We're going to have to count costs tonight. And one of the things I want to share with you is the word cost, C-O-S-T. This cost, you're going to have to have courage to overcome and strength through the tears. Write it in the comments, because this cost is going to cost you. It, it cost me. I'm t I've been paying since 19, I would call it 1989. My brother died at 19, just shot. Cost. My husband dies in 2018. Cost. My mother dies in two, 2020. Cost. It's going to cost us some things. So sometimes we sit back trying to figure out, you know, what it's going to cost, but you're going to have to have, that C is courage. That O is that you're going to have to overcome. That S is that you're going to have to have strength for the journey. And that T is going to be that, hey, God, yeah, but I saw you. You're going to have to have strength through the tears. You cannot sit back. You cannot back down just because it didn't go your way. Because I, you can always make an excuse as to what to do. Well, are we willing to count the cost? Because the scriptures, Jesus is testing us. He's saying, you're going to have to hate some things. You're going to have to let go of some things to be a disciple for me. You're going to have to have strength through it all in Jesus' name. Are we willing to count the cost or are we just trying to figure out the loss? Are we willing to invest in others? Hey, God, because sometimes we're always looking for others to give to us. But are we willing to invest? One of the things I can say about Kingdom Advancement Alliance and Standing Bear Ministries, we've invested in others. We've invested in other nonprofits. We've invested in other ministries. We've invested in people. We've invested in countries. And because of that, God makes sure that there's no lack in our house. And I'm even, you know what, I need to backpedal. When we, um, recently I went into Dubai and I ultimately I was really going into Uganda, but because the Ebola, um, I was not able to go in, but the leaders over there were able to go in because they weren't going to have issues getting back into their countries and an amazing work. It was a miraculous work that I watched the Lord do, uh, as I stayed on the Dubai and in Sarja and I was working on you know, doing the fundraising, getting the uh, finances to the leaders and making sure children being fed. We're making uh, school supplies were happening. We're making sure that evangelistic outreaches were happening in Uganda and Kenya. And apparently that was my job, even though I thought I was supposed to be on the ground. But one of the things I realized is that I put out an appeal to, to, to people that we sold into to give to. And I realized that even though we're supporting, others don't want to support. And I said to Lord, why would that be that others just see us as a source? And one of the things I want to say to that person who's always giving and giving, and check yourself in Jesus' name. Make sure that the ground that you're sowing in is good ground. We know that Kingdom Advancement Alliance is good ground. We know the standard. We make sure that there's fruit on our tree. We are accountable for what we're doing. But one of the things as the apostolic leader, I realize is that if this Uganda trip, check me because I put it out to so many and I realized, my gosh, these are the same people that we all support. These are the same people that we love on and care about. And they don't really care about the children that are starving. One of the things I realize is that God takes care of the widow, which I'm one, and he takes care of the orphan, even though. So even in that, I couldn't even count the loss. I just accepted. Hey, God, I, I did not count the cost. I accepted the loss. And I realized the money that we did collect, all of it, you know, went to the children and to the outreaches. And it, God was able to stretch it. But my heart was kind of broken because I said, we, you know, we care about others, but I realized that maybe others may not care about us that way. And then the Lord took me back. He said, you can't count the cost that way. He says, um, if I call it, I will bankroll it. And one of the things I had to realize, I had to get strength through the tears. And so I'm, tonight I want to strengthen someone because you might have done everything. You might have given everything. You might have lost a lot of things. You might be battling cancer. You might be battling health challenges. You might be battling mental things. Your children may be battling things. But I'm saying to you tonight, have courage to overcome and strength through the tears. That's what COS 
T means to me. We're going to have to have courage. We're going to have to overcome. We're going to have to have strength for the journey. And we're going to have to overcome the tears. Is that you tonight? Because even now in the name of Jesus, Father, I pray for that person who feels that they've been abandoned and isolated, that they've done all that they can and they feel like they can't do it anymore. But I'm saying, I'm, I'm speaking now, I'm sending it through the atmosphere, the strength for the journey, that no weapon that's being formed against you is gonna prosper in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, no weapon in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Cause you're gonna have to, there's a cost. There's another cost that I decided because even though these things were happening and the Lord was still shutting down something, there was another cost that he talked to me about. He said, be consistent in outreach service and training. Cost, be consistent in outreach service and training. It doesn't matter who forgot about you. It doesn't matter who doesn't want to invest in what you're doing. It doesn't matter any of that. You be consistent in outreach, reaching others. You be consistent, hey God, in serving others. You be consistent in training and teaching others in Jesus' name. Because guess what? That's another cost. Are you willing to pay the price? Are you willing? Because it's going to cost you. A lot of people say the anointing costs, but ministry costs. The buildings cost, the cars cost, the outreaches cost. And then I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm appealing to you tonight because we work domestically and we work internationally. And if you're not doing those things, then maybe we'd be a good ground to sow into. But you have, sometimes it hasn't even clicked that maybe we should, you know, give. Even if we're not going, let others go. I wasn't able to go into Uganda. That didn't stop us from sending in the money in so children can eat, get school books, get book bags, uh, evangelistic outreach in Kenya. I, you don't always have to go to sow. So this tonight, some of us getting corrected because we're just holding down and we're just sitting back and we just and we and some of us just only want to give this and no more. But we want God to open doors that no man can shut. But you can't get an open door if it's this and no more. Because you don't even know what he has in store for you. It's to prosper you. It's to give you good success. But if you're just so limited in our thought process that we can't expand what we're saying and we count the cost for every single thing we do, then how can God really fit in in all of that? Ouch. I know. I'm on, I'm on tonight and I'm off next week. So I'm going to give you all I got because this is all what the Holy Spirit is giving me. And let's talk about this cost. There's another cause. Christ overcame Satan's traps. So why are you getting tripped up by everything? If you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if the Holy Spirit is in your life and Christ has overcome Satan's traps, why are we getting tripped up? We have power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and every single thing. Everything is on your feet. The enemies could be your footstool. But you got to know that we can't play in two camps. How do you get caught in Satan's traps? Because we're straddling the fence. This walk is a narrow walk. It's not for the weak. Even though they think Christians are weak, but we're not weak. Because we're in the army of the Lord. We're advancing the kingdom. Standard bear ministry means, means frontline soldiers. We're willing to be out there on the street. But there's a cost out there. We're meeting men out there. We're meeting women out there. We're meeting homeless out there. We're, we're, we're doing a coffee hours. We're do and I'm saying that tonight. There's a cost to consistently outreach, to consistently serve, to consistently train. Are we willing to count the cost in our own lives? Because Christ overcame Satan's traps. Because number... If, if the enemy knew that kill, uh, killing Jesus would have saved us, he would have let him live, right? But what's above our God? Who's higher than our God? Who's wiser than our, than our God? His ways, not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. That when you feel like you're losing, 
your women because Jesus paid it all. But a lot of us, we the thing that we want to reap, we don't want to sow. So it's hard. So you're saying I'm, I'm living paycheck to paycheck. I lived it. So I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about something that what you're talking about is not anything that I was not exposed to. But the reality is, is that I made Jesus first in my life. I made sure I tithed. I made sure I gave an offering. I made sure that I, I could not count the cost and just make a decision. You know, I, I want to get this, this purse. So I'm going to do that instead of Jesus. Because all they got to do is change a molecule in the air and we're all gone. I was reading an article and we got North Korea shooting missiles and all of these things, nuclear weapons at this moment. Are we willing to count the cost? Do not get tripped up by Satan's traps. We need to get the word out and let others know about Jesus. Your job is not conversion. Your job is to share the gospel. Let the Holy Spirit do the work, the same work that he did in us. But we got to tell others about Jesus. Because we're talking about costs, aren't we? We're talking about costs. What's another cost? Mm. You got to know that you're covered. That C means covered. You, then you got to be obedient. Then you got to sacrifice. There's a sacrifice for doing the work of the ministry. This thing of sitting back and, 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 and seeing if you can get investors and, and no. There's a sacrifice that God is looking personally from you. And when you do that, then he will put fuel to that. But there's a cost. And are you going to be your first investor? <clears throat> are you going to be the first partaker? Are you the one? Because guess what? We said you're covered. You got to be obedient. You got to sacrifice. And then you got to trust the process. I know when we started ministry, I tell you, it was 2011. We are going into the 11th year. And I have been running the organization the last five years. And we had no money. When we said the Lord said, you know, open a church, we were like, what in the world? <laughs> How's that going to happen? How is that going to be? And it was week to week, month to month. We just, each week, the Lord just provided. And tonight, I want to strengthen someone tonight because sometimes you're just trying to figure it out. But you can't figure God out. You just got to trust the process and walk it out by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. But are you willing to count the cost? Because there's so many costs. You got to have courage to overcome and strength through tears. You got to cry. You got to be, be consistent in outreach, service, training, teaching, <clears throat> even when people don't want to invest. Are you, are you going to hold back? Are you going to be that person that if someone doesn't do it for you, you're not doing it for them? Because that's not the Jesus method. We're talking about counting costs tonight. Because it says you may have to turn your back on everything. You may have to turn your back on everyone. And they may turn their back on you. But Jesus never turns his back. <coughs> Excuse me. So because it's kind of, it's warm here in Florida, sorry for those up east and definitely Buffalo with a five and a half feet of snow. This cost that we're talking about tonight, I want to make a final appeal for this cost. It's called come over to the salvation team. C-O-S-T, come over to the salvation team. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. This world is so tumultuous right now. There's wars, there's rumor of wars, there's missiles, there's shootings, there's killings. Uh, people are suicidal, depressed. You're taking the subway, you're taking the bus, you're, you're driving your car. There's road rage. There's so many things that are going on in this world. 
And how are you going to miss out on accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and, and, and potentially miss your transition into heaven at any given moment? We don't know what the cost is going to be. But I'm saying, come on over to the salvation team. Accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Because we can all do all this stuff. Have courage. Be obedient. We can do all these things. We can do outreach. You know, I can serve. I can teach. I can train. I can preach. But the reality of the, of, of the situation, if we don't share the gospel, what was it all for? I tell, I, I, I tell the teams... You know, the, the Standard Bear team and the KA team, the pastoral is not a pulpit. It's a calling. We I pastor more people that I've never preached over a pulpit to because the pastoral is a way of life. You got to help people. You got to get them to the next level. You got to move them forward. You got to get them duplicating and not being robots for what you do, but duplicating in a way that the Holy Spirit is leading them. And at this time, I need to shout out Elder Susan, who started to duplicate. Pastor Camelia, who's duplicating. Pastor um, Elaine Gate, who they're duplicating. They're pushing. We're pushing out. Right? We have the foot team out there. Pastor Andrew and Minister Monet, they're on the streets and they're sharing the gospel. You got Deaconess Shandell. You got Deaconess Davey. You got Deaconess Katai. The names go on and on. You got Minister Amisha. You got... Deacon Short, you got the names that go on there because we're not a big team. I can call the whole team because a lot of us are waiting for this big amount of people to do. We went global with like 20 people. And we still have the Genesis team in, 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 in Georgia. But no, we got the team over in Dubai. But no, the reality is, sister, what is the cost? Are you willing to count the cost or are you still focusing on the last loss? We have to advance the kingdom. We have to care about others. But verse 33 in Luke 14 says, so then none of you can be my disciple who does not carefully consider the cause and then for my sake, not for your sake, for Jesus' sake. We're not doing these things because we need accolades. You, you could clap for yourself anytime you want to at home. But the reality is, is that we're doing it to magnify God. It's to give him honor, to give him glory, to give him praise, to lift him up, to show those that are discouraged and, and despondent and don't know him that, it, that Jesus works seven days a week, 24 hours, never slumbers and never sleeps. He's the one that's keeping us all. They don't have to believe it all, but I'm going to share it all. Amen. So the scripture says, so then none of you can be my disciple who does not carefully consider the cost and then for my sake, give up all his own possessions. Are you willing? Because we're talking about tested discipleships. Are you willing to give up your stuff? Because that's what it cost me. It cost me everything to move forward and advance the kingdom. So many, they, they try to help me, but they weren't helping me. They wanted me to help them. So many, so many things, because as a widow, you stand looking to be covered and try to figure out stuff. But the reality of the situation, God got you covered. If you're an orphan, God got you covered. If you're divorced, God got you covered. If you're a single mother, God got you covered. If you're a single father, God got you covered. If you're a single, God got you covered. If you're a child, God got you covered. Because Jesus already paid the price, and that's the, the course is already there. It's already been paid. But now it's for us to accept him by coming over to the salvation team, which is to come on and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, to open up your heart, to confess it with your mouth. And then don't think, don't, it's not something to think about. You know, they, the kids say, don't, don't, you know, just got to be about it. You're going to walk it out. You connect yourself to a Bible belief in fellowship or church. And then you walk this thing out by faith. Your Christian walk is a faith walk. But are you willing to pay the price? Because it's going to cost you. It may cost you some friends. It may cost you some weed, some, some coke, some drugs. It's going to cost you. You don't have to give up some things. 
And some of those things are deterring us already. Popping pills, it's going to cost you some things. I pray even now in the name of Jesus for those who are drug addicted even now, that that be eradicated by this, yeah, by our sire. Hey, God, because that's destroying families. We bind up every addiction even now in the name of Jesus because Jesus paid for all of that stuff. You don't have to buy that stuff. You're losing things because of these things. You're losing family, friends, relationships. Count the cost because sometimes we're worried about the cost to do ministry, but there's things that we're buying that are mm, derogatory to our bodies, to our minds, to our spirits, to our families, and we don't count those costs. Everybody want a red bottle, right? They they want it. They want to wear Versace. They want, I mean, because guess what? The finest things cost you, but the finest thing is Jesus Christ. And salvation's free. You just got to surrender your life, surrender your heart and your mind and accept him as Lord and Savior. So tonight, it's about cost. We buy things. We buy so many things. We buy too many things. You know, uh, that Uganda team there, uh, it, it put me into perspective put things in perspective for me. When children are sending videos, just thanking me for us sending money for food, that they're thankful for rice and, and some meat and some beans, nothing much. And I'm saying that to you tonight. If you never thought about it, if you ever, if you ever th I'm encouraging you tonight to, to give. There's something supernatural that's going on in the spirit realm. And I'm encouraging you to, to sow. I, either you want to help on the domestic end of uh, Stand Bear Ministries with our outreaches uh, on the local front, or you want to help with Kingdom Advancement Alliance on the global front with the orphans, the widows, and the wealth. But tonight I'm appealing to you because I realize that a lot uh, the the all of our success as a ministry team and as a ministry model is because of our heart to give to others, even if they didn't want to give to us. So tonight is time to count costs. That COST may mean so many things to you, but have courage to overcome and strength through your tears. Be consistent in outreach, service, and training. Remember that Christ overcame Satan's traps, so you're not, you don't need to be tripped up. Make sure you know that you're covered, be obedient, be sacrificial, and trust the process. But most of all, come on over to the salvation team. Accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and Master. Because I want to end with this. We were a great deal to Jesus. You were so valuable to him. And sometimes your cost, you don't know that it's your value that he was always looking at all the time. Because you were made in his image and his likeness. And in Luke 14, I want to wrap up with this. I was reading something today. It says, Jesus laid out the terms of discipleship. There were great crowds following him. Everyone loved the miracles, healing, and free food. Jesus was cool, the talk of the town, and the latest fad. But he knew their hearts. And tonight, God is checking our hearts. He knew they desired the benefits of what he did rather than understanding who he was. And tonight, let that not be us. Let us not just be looking at Jesus as the gift machine. Not, let, you know, God, you healed me, so I'm so thankful. And let us not forget those who label among you because you have leaders, pastors, ministers that are praying and caring for you. And, and you just forget because you're on to the next thing. But I'm saying to you tonight, don't be one that just loved the gifts and not love the Savior. So tonight, count the costs and know that there's never a loss when you have Jesus Christ because he was up on the cross for you and for me. So God bless you all. It's Thanksgiving and we got to be so thankful. Let us, let us be like the leper 
in the Bible who said, thank you. And that's to be thankful for the cost that Jesus stayed up on the cross for each and every one of us. And let us not uh, forget about that gift of salvation and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior today. So I am Apostle Sonia Chambers. I'm the Apostolic Leader of Kingdom Advancement Alliance in New York, Florida, and Louisiana. And I'm the um, Overseer and Senior Pastor of Standard Bear Ministries, New York and Florida. And we count costs, but we were, are never at a loss when Jesus is the one that stayed up on the cross. Our goal is to work for him and to serve him. And I pray that you will count costs with us and join in and partner with us so we can get some of this work on the street done in Jesus' name. It's easy to stay inside, but it's rough on the outside, but we know we're called to the outside. So I'm encouraging you to partner with us so we can advance the kingdom in and outside because we believe in fellowship, but it's time to get some new faces in front of the leaders. It's, so it's, uh, it's time to get some new faces in front of the pastor. It's time to start evangelizing. It's time to reach others for Christ. How can they know without a teacher? But guess what? If the teacher's already taught everyone, it's time to get new students. Can you imagine in school that each, each, each grade you're getting the same students over and over again? After a while, you said you didn't learn anything? And a lot of us are mature in Christ to know it's time to walk out our purpose in life. So, you know, God bless you all. Uh, Kingdom Advancement, we are expanding. And um, I want to invite you to our Grace to Tread for the Women, um, Walking in Feminine Excellence. We're going to do a walk that's an individual, or you can do a, bring a group together. And we're going to walk and pray for our communities where we live, uh, beginning December 2nd to December the 9th. Uh, it's an emotional time for me here because we're shutting this down. We will be having Walking in Feminine Excellence. We will be having Wife Florida on tomorrow at two o'clock. And, you know, as I reflect back and we count the cost because, uh, you know, women just, they just so into Wife uh, as they come to the event. We don't put a price on it because we want people, to, their hearts to be molded and shaped to want to give, not just put a price on it. But we invest the time and we train and we encourage the women to be empowered to be all that they can be. And this we, you know, this is a very pivotal wife for me because this is our first wife for Florida, but also it is the eighth wife that we're doing this year. So we're just thankful to the Lord because we've gone to different states and we've done two global in Santo Domingo and in Dubai. And we will be expanding that uh, mission to empower women to walk out their purpose. But it's going to cost you. There's a price. But we have to know that because of Jesus Christ, there's no bigger price. He paid it all. So I love you all. There will be no kingdom advancement next Saturday. There will be no global prayer with Elder Susan next week. Uh, there will be no GP6 next Monday. We will be resuming beginning December 1st. We are taking off to be with our families and to celebrate the holidays as you are as well. And I want to close out by just praying. Father God, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for your price that you pray. We thank you that the cost is never a loss when we are, when you are the boss, when we could trust you even in the process. We thank you, God, that we know we're covered. We thank you, God, that we are now going to surrender to your will and to your way. We're going to follow your instructions and whatever you say, shut down. We're going to shut down and whatever you're saying to open, we're going to open. But Father, we know you the purpose and the plan that you have for us is to prosper us and give us good success. And I speak into, even to the atmosphere now, even now in the name of Jesus, success, 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 and nothing but the very best in Jesus name. So God bless you all. I love you all. Thank you all for tuning in. 
Thank you all for being my guest today because I did a personal invitation, which I've never done before, but I just know that this message is going to shift you pivotally into what you are supposed to be doing and what you're not supposed to be doing. You're going to let go in Jesus name. So God bless you all. I love you all and good night.